you know, every day you walk out is gray, you know, and you can not even understand, but what are they talking about when they talk about sunsets and stuff? We don't ever see that. Everybody else in the world looks out the window every single day and sees different types of clouds, different types of weather. It's a constant production of new entities. And of course, those entities sometimes live long enough, tornadoes and particularly hurricanes, for us to give them a name. Because they are singular individuals, just like we are. And so, we used to give them female names, you know, to, and then we ran out of female names and we started using names like Bob and Fred and, and so on. But uh, we give them names because they last for a certain amount of time. They are born at a certain particular time. They last for a certain amount of history. They have a, their own little history. And then they die. So hurricanes, thunderstorms, tornadoes, cloud formations, wind currents of different types like the monsoon. All those are entities that inhabit the atmosphere and that have the exact same historicity and the same kind of process of production than animals and plants. They, there is a sense in which the atmosphere is alive. I'm going to explain that in a second. Now, how to understand this simpler world, the world of the hydrosphere atmosphere with all this magical, eh, 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 everyday spectacle of, of sunsets and, and, and clouds and, 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 and so on. Well, you, we need to introduce a new concept, the concept of an intensive property. Now, when you look at a textbook of thermodynamics, you're going to find these two words, extensive property and intensive property, and you're going to find examples of each of them. Extensive properties are properties like length, area, volume, you know, very important properties. If you're an architect, you're dealing with those properties all the time. You get a certain volume of space that you need to divide into certain areas for the dining room, for the bedroom, for this, and the walls will have certain lengths. So they are important properties. And, you know, we still use weight is another uh, typical of those properties. And we use them to identify ourselves. What is your height? What is your weight? Right? Intensive properties are very different. The examples are temperature, pressure, speed. We also have those properties in our bodies. When you uh, are lying down with a heart attack or, 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 or some kind of, uh, you know, you were hit by a car and you're in the middle of the street and, and a doctor comes in to check, to check how you are, he doesn't measure your height or he doesn't try to estimate his weight. You know, he's in a good weight, you know, he must be, he, he probably is healthy, you know. He measures your vital signs, he measures your blood pressure, he measures your temperature. You know, if you're too cold, you know, the guy goes, I'm sorry, man, but this guy may be of a nice height, but he's dead. <laughs> he's too cold to be alive. Right? And so, those, those are, you know, and of course, speed, not necessarily only in the sense of the speed of a car, you know, which is also a kind of, a, 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 something that you can experience phenomenologically, but the rates at which your, uh, your processes occur, the speed with which your metabolism occurs. There are certain rates that last 24 hours, other rates that are like last one hour. Your entire body can be defined in terms of rapidities and slownesses. The rapidity or slowness with which a certain process happens. And so these are every bit as important to characterize entities as these are. Nevertheless, they are entirely different. The textbook. This is the way Deleuze defines it, but I'm going to get to this part in a second. The way the textbook defines it is this. He says, extensive properties are properties that are easily dividable or divisible. Imagine that you have a one meter long ruler, made out of wood or something like that, and you know it's one meter, and you break it into two halves. Well, you end up with two half meter rulers. Right? Length is dividable. This is, what, this is what makes extensive properties useful for architects. Architects need to divide and subdivide a space into smaller areas for different rooms. And, and if they were not divisible, then you could not organize the space by subdivision. Intensive properties, on the other hand, are not divisible. 
Imagine that you have a gallon of water at 90 degrees temperature, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Then you divide it into two, a gallon being an extensive property is divisible, so you end up with two half gallons, but those two half gallons are not at 45 degrees temperature each. They are at a similar 90 degrees temperature each. You cannot divide temperature, you cannot divide speed, you can superimpose a grid of degrees, just like we do with a thermometer, with a thermometer, I'm sorry, or we can do with a speedometer, or we can do with a barometer, but that's an imposed grid that we humans impose on it to measure the degrees. But they themselves are not divisible. That is the textbook definition. But Deleuze, since he's trying to make this into a philosophical concept, not a scientific one, he goes beyond that. And he says, wait, wait, wait. What a philosopher has to do here, for, for Deleuze, the most important thing about philosophy is to focus on what's important and disregard what's unimportant. To, to locate what's relevant and disregard what's irrelevant. To find out what's the most significant and, and disregard what's insignificant. For Deleuze, significance, relevance, importance are more important notions than truth. Because truth is cheap. I can, I can produce 10 truths right now in the next minute. You know, I'm wearing black socks. That's true. I'm wearing black pants. I didn't change my underwear today. You know, my armpits smell. You know, I can produce 10 truths right now, all of which are true, but at the end of my list you would go, so what? They're all trivial truths. They're insignificant truths. Who cares about the color of your socks? So the importance of philosophy is not truth, it's not to find truth, it's to find important truths, relevant truths, significant truths. So Deleuze says, yes, this, this divisible versus non-divisible thing is a good way of distinguishing the, the, the two, but it is not what's the most important. This is what the most important. Let me just explain it one at a time. Intensive differences drive processes. It's a very important Deleuzian formula. Let me, I'm going to change pages here to just a little bit so I can draw. What that means is that whenever you put something hot next to something cold, or whenever you put something that's a high pressure next to something that is a low pressure, or whenever you put something that's going slowly next to something that's going fast, the difference itself is going to be act as a fuel that drives a process. Let me create two maps of the Earth. An extensive map. And an intensive map to drive this difference home. Now this extensive map, and I'm going to here draw mostly Mexico because it's the only country I know how to draw. Mm -hmm. That is the most important country in the world, this case. So. Mm -hmm. That's Latin America, that's going to become South America, that's kind of Florida, right? And that's the East Coast. Let's put some islands here, some Caribbean islands, you know, maybe some islands over here, and maybe other islands over there. <laughs> that would be an extensive map because it's, it's all given in terms of the length of the coastlines, the areas covered by each, each uh, country, if we take into account the volume of airspace that is also considered to be part of the country, so that if you invade it, you, you are basically an act of war, and it would be volume, and it's basically defined in terms of extensive properties. It's a useful map, but as you can see, it's an static map. The visibility is basic to it, because of, that's what borders are. That's the, that's the border of Mexico with the United States. If you could not divide those areas, you could not establish frontiers. So the visibility is important when you're dealing with extensive properties. An intensive map would be the same.